What's going on, everybody? It is UAP Tuesday. Man, what a show I got today. Not only are we going to have tons of topics to talk about, I am lucky enough to have a guest that I think everybody in this space is becoming a massive fan of. And we'll talk about it. I'm going to give him a big intro in a second. But what we're going to tell you guys is that last week, oh, we had on, um, last week we had Matt Laszlo on. And Laszlo talked about, it was that one, it was the one story about potentially Gates and Luna seeing the bodies. And then there was a little bit more about potential new hearings coming out. And it was, seemed like it was slower. Well, that's all gone because all hell broke loose last week. All hell broke loose. You got the AARO, Arrow, and DOD coming out and saying, hey, everything we've been doing for 70, 80 years, we're going to try that again. Project Blue Book, you know, remember that? Let's go with that. We're going to do that stuff. And we're going to, this is our report. We ain't found nothing. Nothing. So go ahead. No more. Stop talking about this. You guys on Tuesday, you unvetted. Stop doing what you're doing. It's not true anymore. Just stop it. Okay? Thank you. And everyone said no. That's that's not that's not how this is going to work anymore. We're not back in 1945. We're not back in 1950. Uh, there's a lot of people now that are going to go, that, that stinks. And boy, did that happen. Ross Coldheart is going bananas. He just had Danny Sheehan on. I haven't had a chance to watch the entire thing. I know crazy stuff came out in that interview. I know it. But I can't get to all of it today because I haven't watched all of it. What I will tell you is that I'm excited about this. Next week, just to talk about this right now, Tim Gallaudet. You know him? You better if you know if you've been watching those those um, the soul videos and the new documentary by Darcy Weir about the uh, about the uh, USOs. Well, I talked to him. I talked to them. That's an exclusive next week. The stuff he told me. Holy shit! Yeah, I, it's gonna be nuts when you see what happens next week. But this week we got Cole Hart talking. He talked about that ship. Someone asked him in another interview that big ship that he talked about. He's, he talked about how what could happen, the repercussions, but they there is so much more, man. There was the, Cole Hart also revealed that Congress has seen a 20 minute compelling UFO video. It seems like I mean, Lou Elizondo was out there going, "Okay, you guys want to uh, you guys want to make this narrative, Arrow? Okay, watch what happens." And then she and on Ross Colhart, what I do know, pretty much just called Kirkpatrick out and said, you're a liar. I know for a fact. Now, the question I'm going to pose to you guys, to my guests today is, this is all great that everybody seems to have their dukes up. But the question is, are any real punches going to be thrown? Is it? Is it going to happen? Or is it just going to be one of these things like, oh, you see what happens. You see. And then nothing happens. It doesn't seem that way right now. It seems like people are kicking up some, some stuff. But we're going to find that out, and we're going to talk about that today. I'm super excited to have on Patrick from Vetted. If you guys have been paying attention, look, we just started a daily news show. I and, and when I say daily news, I do Monday through Friday because Saturday and Sunday for me, that's I got I got the kids. It's tough for me to do anything because if I walk away from Ninjago, it's it, shit goes down, so I can't do that. But this guy, he does seven days a week, and he does great stuff. He does a lot of different uh, stories. He talks to a lot of different people. This guy is in the know. He's a, his channel is going up like that. I watch it all the time. You guys watch it all the time. People would tell my attack Peter, who's on this show all the time, was I've been hearing about vetted since I think he started the channel. So I'm pumped to have Patrick on today to break down all this stuff. Speaking of that channel, the Down to Earth with Christian Harloff, Harloff channel, that is live now. So you guys, you can link. It's the first thing you're going to see in the description. Go there. Be part of it. We're at like 13,000 subscribers right now. We're growing. So make sure you join Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. All right, enough of me. It's me and it's Patrick from Vetted. Let's get to it. It's the Big Thing Show. Here we go. All right, welcome back to UAP Tuesdays. Thanks for joining me on the show. Before I bring in the guest again, um, I want to remind everybody that each and every week, we're so glad to have you guys here to have this conversation, especially now when things are heating up. So if you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, man. We're at 131,000, trying to get to 200 by the end of the year, but we got to do that with you guys hitting that button. You'll be part of it. You'll be part of, part of the conversation. So 
thank you so much. Every single time we do one of these shows, more and more people are coming in, and I can't thank you enough for the obvious reason. It builds up the channel. It gets us more in the in the algorithm favor, but it gets the conversation going. As we always say on this show, ask questions. It's the most important thing that you can do, ask questions. Someone who's been asking questions is my guest today. Please welcome Patrick from Vetted. Patrick, what's up, man? How are you? How are we doing, Christian? Happy to be here, man. Good to finally get you here with a lot of tech difficulties that are trying to hold us back, man. I feel like the men in black are doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let them let them try. Let them try. We'll, we'll um, just keep using different software after different software until we get this. Until they shut the whole thing down. Damn Sean yeah. Kirkpatrick. Um, <laughs> so wait, before we get into all the topics, because we've got a ton of it today. How'd you get started in this, man? How'd you get how'd, because your channel, you I mean, like I said in the intro attack peter who's on this he's like dude you got to check out this guy from vetted he's uh he's 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 in it he's really he's working okay. and i've been watching your videos and i've been you know it's a good it's a great source for people to really kind of deep dive into this thing and how'd you get connected into this topic in the first place well first let me say to attack peter thank you so much appreciate that um second yeah i had another podcast before this which is still you know on youtube it's called the lone star plate and um i interviewed james fox right about moment of contact yeah. and that really just set me off if i'm being honest that really yeah. just got me going and um yeah just you know got into this because of that really really because of that before it was always like a surface level like i think a lot of us yeah and once once i interviewed him about that and i found that film absolutely fascinating and invigorating and i thought there might be something to this well, that was the whole, I mean, that was a similar situation where for me it was, it was, I was watching and I've talked about it an exhaustion to my, to the audience now is that <laughs> the, uh, the, the UFOs investigating the unknown. It was that six part five or six part series on uh, national geographic that I was the same way you were. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm cool. A ancient aliens. I'm down. And it wasn't that at all. <laughs> right. It was military and people talking about, and that's what got me into it down the rabbit hole. And I mean, dude, just because daily news and all that stuff, that wasn't even a consideration when it was when I was starting this with Riley. It was like, oh, yeah, we'll have something to talk about, maybe like bi monthly or bi weekly. Who knows? And the amount of stuff. Are you shocked with how much stuff is actually out there? Uh, absolutely. I mean, people will ask me all the time, how do you how can you do a video every day? Like, you know, you must be scrubbing for content. Not at all. In fact, <laughs> there's so much content. I can't even cover it with one video a day, to be honest with you. I have to push stuff to the side. I get comments all the time of, hey, cover this, cover mm -hmm. that. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you get the same thing. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's there's more to cover than than it, the time there is to cover it. It's it, it's you're absolutely right. I mean, even when it came to. Because we were, I mean, and and you said it on your show the other day, and I thought it was, it, 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 because people are always looking to try to get, especially in this community I've seen already, is that people are just looking to do this the whole time. And someone asked you, because we were starting um, the daily news as well, and some, and you you were like, oh, that's what, that's what I do, and but more people should be doing it anyway. And that's exactly the same way that I felt when someone was like, why are you going to have, isn't having Patrick on, uh, isn't that a competition? I was like, no, everybody's trying to do the same. This isn't, this isn't a business. This is people trying, this is, we're trying to get the, we're trying to get people having a conversation about what the hell's going on up there. And the more people doing it daily, uh, hourly, that's an important <laughs> thing. By the minute. Yeah, the no, minute. I'm with you, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the more people doing, I wish more people would do daily stuff. So when I found <laughs> out you were, I was like, hell yeah. We need more of that building out to get this conversation to more people. Yes. And you've been doing it masterfully. And so I would highly recommend if you guys aren't already checking out vetted, please go and do that. I'll put a link in the description for Patrick's channel. You should go on over there and subscribe to him today because it's, it's well worth the subscription, man. He has a lot of great stuff going on. Um, all right, let's get into this stuff, man. The arrow report. I mean, that was what everybody was talking about. Um, you, covered this you saw this this is essentially what happened was dod and arrow we knew this was coming because ross colhart the day before had a had a breakdown and said uh not 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 he had a <laughs> breakdown of the report that he didn't yeah. actually break down on air but he had a breakdown about the actual report and he said okay this is what's gonna this is what's coming tomorrow they haven't invited news nation they they've hand selected who they wanted to come out to do this thing and then dod gets out there they do exactly what he says it's basically to say nothing to see here nothing to see here 
please stop talking about it now. And if you do whistleblowers and not so many words that there might be some prosecution. So, okay, it's, it's over now. Right. And then that went over like a fart in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let's start with just the fact that they're living amount of reporters that got um like like you know you're in movies right christian like they did the same thing with like a review embargo right like they mm -hmm. gave them this uh report and were like they got to see it early and they got to write their stories and get their you know conclusion about it right mm -hmm. and only to a limited amount of reporters i mean what happened to freedom of the press like this america like i don't right. know but that really pissed me off you know what i mean like that just didn't make any sense um to me um, yeah. And Ross Coulthard called it, man. Yeah. Well, it made, it made sense in the, in the narrative. It made sense as far as like, Hey, we only want people there that a are not going to ask the questions we don't want them to ask, you know, Correct. and then just put out this thing and, and basically just back up what Sean Kirkpatrick said. Okay, guys. And everyone went, yeah, okay, sure. What, where you got, where I have to go, where you have to go. They're doing a, they're doing a thing at the, uh, the DOD for, for what UFOs. I, you want what can i cover the cat in the tree no yeah. <laughs> all right i'll go there and they don't know what the hell's going on so you get these people from you know cnn or fox and they're going there and like, okay great uh, dod says what we thought no aliens and did you notice that pavel brought that up when we were talking about there was no mention once in that report of nhi only alien life did you did that stand out to you 100 percent. yeah they well they use specifically the term extraterrestrial right, right. and there was a there's a guy named Dan uh, Setterstorm who's a mm -hmm. co-host on that UFO podcast, yeah, and yeah. he reached out to Susan Go, right, the Department of Defense's public relations officer, and he asked her, "Why? What, what's up with this word, right? Extraterrestrial?" She commented, "Like not of Earth, right?" So they're leaving open a wiggle mm -hmm. room, right? They're leaving right. themselves wiggle room. Why didn't they use the term NHI? Because that is the term that's been used. Right. By these whistleblowers, by people that came to testify, David Grush and his congressional testimony, yeah. um, even the UAP amendment that Chuck Schumer and other Congress people put together. Right. That was the whole thing. N.H.I. So why not use that term? It's it seems calculated. It seems absolutely calculated. And it seems like they, as you were saying, it seemed like they were covering their asses for down the line of when they said, well, we didn't say that. Exactly. We, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And because if you look at all the things, dude, and I know that we didn't have a chance, either one of us, to listen to the full thing, but the Danny Sheehan interview on Ross Coldheart, I mean, he was just talking about just the stuff from the beginning of his interview about how he was essentially brought in and the, the reports from George Bush Sr., because there's been reports of George Bush. In, like I, I can't remember where it was. And maybe you know this. I might have probably even seen it on your channel, but where, where George Bush was was drunk or something and he said to somebody hey you want to see a picture of an alien and then he and then he was like or whatever i can't remember what it was it was something if you look up this story i thought it was in your channel, maybe it's not but it was it was something like he has been because of his involvement in the cia and everything that he was very much aware of the phenomenon so danny sheehan talking about him right off the bat was not a surprise now actually um i hadn't heard that story before to be honest with you oh, okay um but that's fascinating so now i'm gonna look that up and i'm look sure it up. I may, I may, well. and let me know if i murdered that story because I'm, I'm sure that it was something along the lines of that yeah Sorry. oh i'm sure i'm sure you're not that far off to be yeah. honest with you but let's be real right george bush senior was the head of the cia and if right. you trace his family back they were involved potentially in this majestic 12 mm -hmm. right so yep. uh that would not surprise me i mean nixon has a story or Gle Jackie Gleason used to tell a story yeah. about Richard Nixon, Nixon right? Uh, yeah. Taking him to see alien bodies when they had a few drinks, right? Like, uh, and then he built all <laughs> yeah. these houses shaped like UFOs. Joe Rogan loves telling that story. And I love hearing that story. Um, so yeah, it, it's quite fascinating. Look, Sheehan coming out swinging. Uh, actually, I got to take a look just a second ago at yeah. some of the comments that he made. Um, and fascinating. This is, this is crazy. Yeah, what's some of the stuff that stands out? Well, there's... Um, this 40 to 50 foot crashed UFO that he right. saw, right. right? Like, uh, what, uh, what, <laughs> I, I mean, how is that not everywhere? Something, right. Yeah. How is everywhere. that not everywhere? And how is arrow not look? I mean, if I'm being honest, like I don't even care about that arrow report. It's a joke, right? It's a joke. It, it didn't involve so many factions of our government. Right. Um, right. 
they didn't get a chance to vet it. Right. Uh, I made a point on my show like they talk about in this report and Sean Kirkpatrick has said in his op ed that it's a small cabal, small group of people telling mm -hmm. the same circular story. Right. Well, hey, you know, what's the other side of that coin? That's what Sean Kirkpatrick and his little homies are doing. They're a small little group, small little cabal telling the same story in a circle since the 40s, since yeah, the 40s. Exactly. It's the same thing. Like it's almost like projection. Yeah. You know, and yeah. It is, but you know what it also seems like, though, Patrick, is like, it's like one of these things where um, they didn't, it, they, they're going like, like this old school way of trying to shut down things. In the same way, you remember when Grush first made his report and they were like, oh, you know what, Grush? Well, guess what he did? He drank and he was, he had some serious uh, mental problems and, he, and, and so he's not credible, right? And they're like, no, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, because this guy, he he had PTSD, and he was uh, he was a war veteran. He's a hero, and there's a lot of other things in there that you're not bringing out, and that stuff of that public kind of humiliation tactic that's not that's not going to work. So that was part one. This to me, the other thing that they weren't accounting for was the social media aspect of it all. Like the whether it's smaller shows like my show, you know, your show, like these, these smaller media inside the YouTube, that's one thing. And then you get the Ross, Ross Colhart, Lou Elizondo tweeting and all these things. Who are they trying to shut down? Who are they trying to shut down? Because if they're trying to go after the, 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 the regular, this average everyday person, they didn't even hit this story. The, the arrow report, you'd figure that the, the major networks that aren't covering this, that they would have been like, let's have all of the major networks cover this. They didn't. So who, who are you talking to? That's a great point, um, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's a great point. And look, you know, regardless of all that, you how many millions of people in the world have had their own personal experiences here? So no matter what that report says, right? Like you got people going, uh, what? Like, I, I don't even care what that report says. It, it is, I think they're talking to themselves to some extent. They're yeah. almost like they're, I, they're trying to convince I don't, I, you know, you know, you make a great point, man. I, you kind of just broke my brain right there. Like, who are they trying to convince <laughs> here? You know what I mean? You're right. I'm convinced, dude. I was convinced that they were going to be like, okay, tonight when I turn on, because I'm like an 80 year old man. When I turn, I turn on, and I watch Lester Holt for my to see like what the. I don't want opinions. I don't want people telling. I just want to see what's the news today, right? Yeah. Nothing from from any whether it was ABC, whether it was Fox, was it, no matter where it was, it was not covered again. And I'm like, well. That's what happens normally with the big stories of pro stuff. And that's, I'm waiting for that news normally. Like I, when the Soul Foundation stuff, I'm like, how does nobody's covering this? Or when, or when Schumer, the majority le uh, leader, is up there talking about NHI, nowhere, nothing. I'm, I'm not talking about print, I'm talking about major new news networks, nothing. And the fact that they didn't do it this way around, maybe they just didn't want to bring attention to it at all. But then why make the report? Who, who are you making this report for? Because it did the opposite. It did the opposite and it caused an absolute shitstorm in the in the UAP community. And such can be said for like we're talking about Dan, Danny Sheehan. Here's what he said when the actual um, the report came out. This is this was from Twitter, I think, on March 9th. And he said, I'm taking the extraordinary step of informing the public and the media that I personally know that Dr. Kirkpatrick and his associates at the DOD and the AARO are consciously lying when they falsely assert that they have been provided no sustainable evidence of the existence of a secret U uh, U.S. government UFO crash retrieval program because I personally provided to Dr. Kirkpatrick himself under oath the fact that I was granted access to the still classified files of the Project Blue Book related to the over 700 cases of UFO sightings that could not be rationalized as any natural phenomenon that had been simply mistaken, misidentified as a UFO. And that in that capacity, I was shown by official representatives of our U.S. government several official photographs of an active UFO crash retrieval operation. So that's from that tweet. And then he elaborated on it for about an hour with Ross <laughs> Coldheart. Well, he's going to testify, right? That's what I, I just saw uh, uh, a tweet that you had sent me uh, to look at, right? Like he is yeah. going, 
or he he's offering to testify. Um, th that's what that's what concerns me the most about a lot of this is if there's nothing to see here, why do they shut down so much skiffs right. for the Congress yeah. people to talk to David Grush? He gave everyone a treasure map and a list of people and said, mm -hmm. "Go here. This is where it is." Why haven't we done that? Why haven't they done that? That those are the red flags for normal people that are like. Uh, why are we not doing that, right? Why are we not having pub public hearings, letting these people testify? And if this report is what Sean Kirkpatrick and the rest of the people there are saying it is, why haven't they arrested David Grush for, exactly. for lying under oath in July? That's exactly right. Because what they're, they're, their rationale to that is like, well, he believes in what he was told, but what he's been told is false information. And then you look at some other reports of what Grush actually, when Kirkpatrick said, no, oh, come on in, we want to talk to you. He's like, well, I can. You got to give me. You got to give me um, assurance that, if, in writing, that I can come in and I can give you the stuff. But you got to give me assurance that I'm allowed to do that and pass the clearance. And yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out when you come in. He's like, no, <laughs> give it to me now. So then I'll come in. And Kirkpatrick was, and from from all reports, that Kirkpatrick was not happy that both Grush wasn't coming in. Other whistleblowers don't want to talk to him. Why would any whistleblowers want to talk to Arrow after this? Especially after, and that was before this. And now, especially now, and you make, you know, the point of the fact that all these different whistleblowers are going to um, eventually, you know, come in and people are going to testify. But to your earlier point of why not just say, OK, look, fine, you want to this isn't real and you're going to testify and we're going to prove to you that it isn't. It's this if I was if I knew for a fact, if I was if I was DOD and I was Arrow and I knew for a fact that none of this, it was all bullshit. I would say, let them have the hearing. Let him exactly. have bring them in, exactly. show them. Well, here's what I want you to do. Look, we're going to take the senators and we're going to put them in the room, not public because we can't. And we're going to tell them about the. We're going to show them the ship. They have the address of what of the thing that they want. Bring them to the freaking thing and show them. It's a classified military thing that we can't tell the public about and show them. But they don't do that. They don't Correct. do that. And it's Correct. like so many different times. So, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. No, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Like, why didn't they, why didn't they do that with Grush? Why didn't they pull Grush aside years ago? I, listen, I, I don't think most people understand that Grush was part of the UAP task force right. set up by the Pentagon. The same people that started Arrow, right? Senator Gillibrand got David Grush on the UAP task force and he started an investigation and looked into this and this is his conclusion and they just want to brush it off. Basically, let's be real. Grush's investigation is the same thing as Sean Kirkpatrick's investigation. Mm -hmm. Why is his more important than David Grush's? I haven't seen I have not seen Sean Kirkpatrick testify before Congress and take hard questions like that. He did before when these other hearings, but that was yeah. more that wasn't a testimony. That was just more, hey, this is what we're looking into. Uh, I need more clearances. Can you help me out? Right. Ask him some softball questions. I'm talking about testifying to what he knows right so that's uh, very confusing and and to your point about why don't people want to talk to arrow let's be real arrow did not even get the full context of information right to make this report how can they make the report right Abby Loeb said it best they didn't have scientists they didn't have these people like this isn't conclusive at all and during the time that arrow was doing these investigations the way they would interview people was like over the phone on conference mm -hmm. calls they're overlapped People are hearing each other's testimony. It's not even right. secure. Who's going to want to go tell these stories? I mean, it's a, it's just a joke. Um, I, whether you believe in this phenomena or not, it should make you angry that this is how it was handled. Well, that's the point. That's a great point. That's a great point because that's what I always say. It's like, I don't need you. I think asking questions, as I said in the beginning, not just on the side of disclosure, but on the side of skepticism on the side, is, is healthy. And especially like if you if you, I said to all my friends who like my friends who like politics and I, I say to them every single time when they're like, oh, what are you doing? You're talking about UFOs. And I said, let me ask you a question. These are people that I know that are in politics. And I say the same thing. I'm like, how much do you know about it? I know there were some hearings and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, but what do you know about the Chuck Schumer uh, uh, of it? You know, then like nothing. What 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 is Jeff, what does he have to do with it? I'm like, yeah. exactly. And it's like how the and my my question to that is, again, even if you are skeptic. You should be like, why didn't why didn't they cover this? Why didn't they cover the fact that he was saying this stuff? And there's a there's a reason behind it. Why is why have the main 
networks not covering it. There's a reason behind it. And it's like, and it all traces back to whether or not it's, you know, the, the Lockheed Martins of it all and all these different things that are, that are, it's all a business. It's all a business. And if there, and it's the same way that the amount of headache that would come with disclosure right now would be monumental. And I'm not going to give a full spoiler on my interview with Tim Gallaudet yet, but one of the things that he did say, he's like, there's no president that's going to, the president's not going to disclose this right now. There's no way because it would all take away from the election. It's 100%. Like, yeah. He's like, it's not going to, it's not going to happen right now. I, I'll be honest. I, I mean, me personally, I don't think it'll ever happen. Yeah. Period. Even yeah. I, 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 th I think asking our government to out themselves is, is it's like, it's like thinking someone suspected of murder and be like, okay, investigate your own case. I mean, yeah. just to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, there's no way our governments, we need whistleblowers. We need firsthand witnesses to come out. I, I get the argument that, well, they got families and it's going to be dangerous. Well, I don't know what to say here. You know, well, like, I'm going to title this whole episode basically, well, what comes next? Right. With all exactly. This, like, what comes next? And if you don't think there's going to be disclosure through the government, right? And which, which I think is a fair, um, be skeptic, be skeptic, be pessimistic about it. I, I think it's fair. I am too. I go back and forth with it. Yeah. But if we're talking about whistleblowers and we're talking about people that are coming forward, it's like if the government itself is the one who's putting that forward and then they get to a place where like, Hey, I mean, cause what they're doing is they're going to put the pressure down on whoever the president is to say, Hey, listen, look at, we, we just had 40 people come out and these are firsthand. This isn't, this isn't, I heard that they might have this. This is like, I saw the freaking thing. I saw it. And if they have what's and what's do I always forget the guy's name who the it was it Latatsky? Is that what it is? Lekat, I was just gonna mention him actually. Yeah, Lekatsky. Yeah, Lekatsky. I was gonna say that. Yeah, and I, know, I know what you're gonna say. It, wait, wait, you put that guy on the stand and you say, Hey, we breached the hull of this ship. I've seen the ship, I've seen it. And you're like, next report. And if you if it's if Lester Hall ain't talking about that, Lester and I are gonna have some beef. <laughs> I mean. You're not wrong. Exactly, man. I mean, they have people that have put their hands on the craft, breached the whole of crafts, recovered crafts, reverse engineered technology. Um, those people are going to have to come out and come forward. And I don't know any other way. Um, we get, we, there was a chance, right? Yeah. With, with this. And the fact that they're not covering the Senate majority leader, right? Uh, you know, pushing this and not just pushing it, but pushing it in a way of really behind it, right? Like really supporting it and, and making it a big part of um, during a time when it was very sensitive, right? Like his time was so sensitive during these last three months of the year, right? With the war in Ukraine and, and everything happening, right? Like the, for the fact for him to take time to implement that, bill and try mm -hmm. to get it into the ndaa says a lot man like and i'm sorry i just that not being covered you're right it 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 makes no sense it does yeah it's true i mean most of the news like i'm telling you i get a lot of the my news from whether it's uh twitter your channel like other places too like to where and now the good news is that for a while it seemed like news nation like fell asleep at the wheel like they weren't they weren't they right. were reporting on stuff and then i think that once they weren't invited to the report like it really pissed them off because now they're covering it like like it's back in july yeah, <laughs> yeah. and which is which is great like, but that's again like the fact that ross colhart wasn't invited to this thing when he was the one who put grush there in the first place going right, back right. to your earlier point if it's not real they're going to go, you know what? Bring the guy who interviewed Grush, bring him there. He's going to ask his questions and we'll shoot them all down in front of everybody. And we'll, anything that he asks, we'll shoot them down. And they didn't yep. do that. Yeah. And they pissed Cold Heart off even more. Exactly. That, that's the thing. Like, all it's going to do is invigorate more people, inspire more people. I mean, you know, I, I did see a quick clip of Sheehan with Ross Coltart. He's pissed, man. These people yeah. are pissed. pissed. I mean, over the weekend, I honestly have not seen a weekend of this much activity in the yeah. UFO community since Grush came out. Yeah, it's that, it that is. is true. Everyone was putting out statements. Lou Elizondo, yeah. you know, Jeremy Corbett, you name it. Everyone's yeah. putting out these definitive statements of, oh, yeah, OK, this is what we're going to do. So. That I that mean, does make me nervous. Not nervous, but like I am still in that 
phase of because I, I sent it to Mark Ellis, who is who is my partner Schmozno for many years. And he, actually, if you go back and you look at the first um, show we did of this, was actually with him. And I sent him the Ross Colhart and Danny Sheehan interview, and and his response. I'll read his response, and it's a it's a response that a lot of people are asking, and the majority of people, whether you're into this or not into this or just curious about it. And he said. Are there any pictures of real shit or is this just people saying that they saw stuff? And he said, right, right. and he said, I'll give it a chance, but I want evidence. I'm tired of people just saying that they have it. And he followed it up I by agree. saying, this is the X-Files. Um, I agree. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. That's why I'm like, we need firsthand whistleblowers. No more yeah. stories. No more. Where's all this evidence that they said exists? Bring it out. You have it. Because where we have nowhere else to go. Yeah. That's it. We're at the goal line. We got to cross the goal line. We can't just keep running around. Yeah. Like we, we gotta, we gotta come out with this, right? We like, can't still keep doing the same, like, Oh, it's coming. I promise. Correct. Because, correct. People, because even people like you and I who are like, okay, okay. We're like, come on. Like what's what? And I know it's a slow process. I get it. But when you got arrow and, and DOD making statements like this, it's like, okay, well, what's, if they if they if they hit a single you got to hit a home run exactly and so look, i'll play devil's advocate here for yeah. a second um yeah. just to, just to give another perspective you you could argue that we have made progress so i i like to look yeah. at i like to look at the uap movement in different level in different parts right mm -hmm. so you could argue just like any legislation sometimes the first attempt it gets not it gets shot down and then mm -hmm. you come back next year and you get and you keep building you build more support and then it finally gets passed right look at any major legislation in american history whether it be the right to vote civil rights abortion well that got taken back but um you know gay marriage right like these things take time right gun control whatever it is it takes time so maybe it's one of those kind of scenarios like you know, we haven't had this kind of movement in the government about this topic. So right. just to be fair to the whole thing, maybe it just needs a couple more years of digging out each year into the NDAA till finally it's like, OK, we're going to pass it. Right. I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate right there. I, I, think, so I think we have made some movement. Totally. I think it's a more than fair assessment. I think it's an accurate assessment. I think that that's exactly what they said at the Soul Foundation. It's not going to be it's like there was a there was a, the timeline. That, yeah. that that they put forth and said this is basically what's going to happen but and i this is the other thing that i asked today i asked him uh, where they were so adamant though in every one of those videos that the schumer bill was going to pass i and, i was just going to say that you're yeah, right they were so adamant that that was going to that was they were they were putting all their chips on that that thing was going to pass and sure it passed but it was a watered down version now, whether it's Tim Gallaudet, whether it's um, uh, Steve Bassett, they all believe, and they've said it many times over, and he made a good point today when he said this to me, was that many bills get rejected on their first one or get rejected and have to be skimmed down, but then they get passed again in their original form later on down the line. Yeah. So that's what they, they Schumer's going to wind up trying to run this thing again the end of the year. But what happens leading up to that? Is it another hearing? You're you're as a you're as confident as I am that there will be another hearing in this summer. Yeah, definitely. I think there's yeah. going to be another public hearing. My curiosity is who is going to testify because remember last July we we saw David Grush, mm -hmm. Commander David Fravor, right, and Ryan Graves. Well, there was supposed to be like eleven or twelve witnesses testify. Right. right. Even Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp were supposed to testify. Yep. Um, so I think we will have another hearing. And I think this is going to push some of these Congress people to get more people to testify. But it's got to be we you know, I love that Danny Sheehan wants to testify. He mm -hmm. says he's a first hand witness. Now he's just seen a photo. That to me is not a first hand witness. I'm sorry. Like we need people that have touched the craft. And, and I think yeah. defining what firsthand witness, I've talked about this on my channel, like defining what does firsthand witness mean? We got to be real. Like, I want to know what that means. What are they the thinking? Hand witness, though, but Patrick, I will say firsthand witness, depending on what is the firsthand witness. If it's a first document witness, or a picture. Yeah, right. You're right. You're right. right. If it's a firsthand right. witness to where he's like, well, no, I was in the room when George Bush slapped down the thing and showed me yeah. the reports of where these things were. That's a firsthand witness. But yeah. I also agree with you that you need a firsthand witness when it comes to, well, yeah, but I I, I saw the thing. Or I was That's in what people assume. Virginia. 
let's be real. The average person, when they hear firsthand witness, they, oh, they've flown in the, uh, the UFO right. or they right. or they touched it or they, that's what they're thinking. They're not thinking, Ooh. oh, I was a firsthand witness to some documents. I, I guarantee you that there's not anybody thinking that right off the bat. Now, when you explain it like you did, that makes sense. And that's logical. But but I don't think that's where most people are. Um, yeah. So okay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they need firsthand witnesses for that's why they need so many. They need yeah, you're right. Hand. You're like, right. You're right. So like I'll bring up like bring up Tim Gallaudet again. He was a first hand witness of seeing the uh, that that video when it came in and seeing and and being the go fast. Right. The go fast. And yeah. before before it was made public and he was yeah. and he's convinced uh, of of uh, he he's he's someone that should be a first hand witness. Right. So uh, depending. The but, there, but there's also. As we mentioned, you know, with uh, I was mentioned, uh, you just said his name and I said Lukatsky. Is that it? Yeah, Lukatsky. Yeah. So Lukatsky is um, Lukatsky. Yeah. Now you got to get that guy. You got to get him. Hundred percent. But see, that's the thing with James Lukatsky. He he has said multiple times, and in fact, in the same interview where he revealed on the Weaponized podcast with Jeremy Corbell and mm -hmm. George Knapp that story that you're you're referring to of breaching the hole mm -hmm. of a UFO. Um, he also claimed that he doesn't believe in disclosure. Yeah. He doesn't want disclosure. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not for that. So I don't see him being, I don't see him testifying. Subpoena. Now, you know, are subpoena. there more people like that? Yeah. Subpoena. I agree. I, I mean, I'm with you like, and, and you know what, to be fair that, that uh, now that I'm thinking of it, David Grush in his testimony under oath in Congress said that he said, I've got 40 witnesses. Yeah. Some hostile and not, meaning some that don't want to be my witness, but we will we'll, we will subpoena them to come in. Right. Right. So I bet James Lukaski is one of them. I hope so. There's a lot of other people. Is. All right. So listen, before we move on, because we have a lot more to talk about, man, we got there's there's the responses. Ross Colthart talked about a lot of the different things there. There's the that was just kind of the lead up of what arrow did and what dod did and the kind of backlash as patrick said this is one of the most heated weeks of information but before we move on as i tell you guys each and every week we are so lucky to have on our wonderful sponsors each and every week and it's the reason why we're able to keep continuing to do this show and i want to tell you guys real quick about our friends over at fume and robin hood here you go i tell you about about robin Hood. this is a this is a new one so did you guys know that even if you have a 401k for retirement that you can still have an IRA, Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe on Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from, from other ret in retirement accounts with a 3% match. And that's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claims as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investigating, excuse me, inv excuse me, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial is a registered broker dealer. Let's talk about some habits because you guys know you got some habits and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit. And we've talked about fume before you guys you guys know we've talked about fume uh, we've we've had fume on and we're glad that they are back it's great and mark riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up and i can't wait for him to to talk about it even more so on the show um when he's on for uap and he's just talking about how flavorful it was better than he thought it feels very fresh and it's like a refreshing herbal tea but if it was vapor uh it, it was it, you can look at it like sticky soda it's got non it's 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 really good it's it's well weighted it's perfectly balanced it's extremely fun to fidget with and it really look at the, the the wood itself it's it's great you can start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash big thing and getting the journey pack today fume is giving listeners to the show 10 percent off when they use that code big thing 
to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's you get it instead of bad fume is good it's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy it comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts it's great they use flavored air instead of vapor the fume is completely completely natural by the way instead of electronics and there's no this is the reason why i decided people are like, well why, why would you why would you get involved with someone like this why because they don't use harmful chemicals they use delicious flavors and that's why i got involved fume works they're great so thank you again to fume for sponsoring the show all right thank you to our friends over at fume and robin hood as i mentioned each and every week if you're able to you have the means to please consider one of our wonderful sponsors i always say i get people saying how do i support the show i love what you guys are doing our sponsors because you're getting so something for yourself and you're helping out the show all right bringing back patrick now, patrick you know we talked about beforehand too real quick like so fume fume something that you you'd be very interested in as well too uh yeah uh absolutely i am i am yeah. i am exactly who they're looking for uh yeah, you, gotta 100%. Break, you gotta break the bad habit with a good habit man that's what that's their whole exactly. thing and i love it it's natural air it's really great flavored air oh yeah i i i'm in i mean you know i'm in like all right i'm gonna I'm back gonna get in you time code. uh i would do it i'm gonna get you that code um all right let's talk about some ross Coldheart stuff man because this guy is he's on a war path right now yeah all right, speaking of that UFO podcast he had on Ross Colhart, and here's here's this clip. I'm going to play this. It's a five-minute clip, but it's it's worth it. Take a listen to this. Forward, you, you brought up, and it was like you were reading my, my, sheet, my cheat sheet here, um, the, the craft you mentioned, and that's been a talking point now for months. It was outside the U.S., um, in the podcast, this podcast, Discord chat, it's much more civil than it is online. And people were <laughs> discussing those. Uh, it genuinely is, and people were uh, quite nicely discussing that comment and the debate and it was all had very kindly and you had some supporters others a little bit more frustrated was around why exactly you aren't allowed to say where the craft is and i wonder is that protecting sources or uh, what would happen if you came out today on this podcast and said okay andy you, no, no, the, the what, craft what, is in let, france let, let me tell you i can't tell you the country it's in it's not america but what i can tell you is that the place where it is kept is used for another purpose that is a laudatory purpose that's as much in your interests in your country in the uk as it is in mine in australia and as it is in america so the simple reasons are that you know there are other uses for the place where this object is stored and we could end up with a storm area 51 type oh, scenario if you came and, out and, and announced I can, it. I can tell you, mate, that would be a nightmare, absolute nightmare. And, you know, it's um, funny. I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people think journos just publish and be damned. But, you know, <laughs> I've been in situations where I've known the identities of active intelligence operatives in countries overseas. And I've realized, Christ, if I published this, I could jeopardize their lives. So there is an element of source protection as well. I mean, I don't want the personnel in those facilities to be hurt. Uh, and it could. It could create an international incident. I mean, it's up to the U.S. to make a judgment about, you know, if somebody like I know this. Um, <laughs> I was laughing the other day because um, somebody said on Twitter, oh, yeah, yeah, Kultat must be lying because he couldn't possibly know this. He's just a journo. And... It's funny, you know, many is the time I've wished to myself, I wish I didn't know a lot of this stuff because as a journo, it's it's actually a bit of an overwhelming responsibility to have to make these judgment calls. I wish, I actually frankly wish somebody in the US intelligence community would show leadership and develop a spine and go to the White House National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, and say, Mr. Sullivan, for God's sake, you know, let us put out some kind of a statement because we really are at that state at the moment. You know, so many people privately know what's going on. And I'm sorry to sort of talk in vague, oblique hints, but what's going on is pretty bloody horrifying and confronting and outrageous. And I know the White House knows about it. And there's being, I mean, the reason why, for example, I suspect Thomas Monheim, the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, put out such a, how do one say this politely, evasive response to the inquiries from the congressman 
asking about whether he was taking David Grush's allegations and complaints seriously. He didn't deny that he was doing an investigation, but he basically denied doing everything else that's within his powers. And I know for a fact he's doing an investigation because I've seen conclusive evidence in the last couple of weeks that his investigators are talking to people to investigate Mr. Grush's claims. Um, you know, I've been presented with absolutely incontrovertible evidence that the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community's investigations are ongoing. And so the only reason why he, as an executive appointed official, would be reluctant to speak publicly and admit what he knows is because the White House is putting a blanket on what people can say and what people can talk about. OK, so that's a that's a hearty clip. Um, and again, UFO podcast got Ross Colhart on the show and he talked about it. So the first thing, when you talk about that, the claim of that ship, right? And I think he makes a good point. It's like the stuff that you get fed on. And even you brought before with like movies, like I've known things, I've known things inside of like, um, stuff about whether it was star Wars or whether it was a new movie that a, a big actor or actress was doing. And I was, and I knew it for, for two years and I couldn't say anything because I didn't want people to get fired. Yeah. much you know much less potentially like lives being lost and it's it's like so and that's like that's like the small scale as opposed to what what this guy's talking about so if you're sitting i mean he probably should and he said it he probably shouldn't ever let that slip that he even knew because of course if, if you told me hey i know where your ship is i'm like well, where is it of course so what do you, you make of that those comments yeah i mean i agree um that that's the that's that's the catch-22 with this topic is that we want to hear the stuff but we maybe shouldn't hear the stuff because as soon as we hear it, we can't let it go. I mean, we're dangling a carrot in front of us. Like, we, we want that. You told us a UFO so big, they built a building around it. Yeah, I got a bazillion questions. And let me just be real. The fact that he said right off the bat, it's not America, lets me to believe it's America because he immediately tried to, you know, like tell you it's not America. Yeah, I don't know. That's just my thought. I think, uh, why would you say that right away? Well, it's not America. Well, that makes me think it's America. Uh, but whatever, uh, you know, I I also understand the storm fear area 51 aspect, right? We, if you do say where it is, yeah, there are going to be a lot of people go there and crazy people right. will go there right. without a doubt to find out, you know, with a chainsaw and, 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 a, and a headlamp ready to ready to get it, you know, find this thing, um, you know, but at the same time, we want to hear those stories. So it's a catch 22. Like we want to hear it. But at the same time, it frustrates us to not get the full story. We get a we get a bite of it. It's like it's like we get to see it. You know, the story. We just don't get all the details, right? Like, so I get it. I, like, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, if you should tell it or not, because it's on us to decide what to do with that information and how mm -hmm. far to take it and how much to be frustrated by it. Let's be real. If if um, there was more movement with disclosure and stuff. Nobody would care that we didn't know about this UFO so big. It's true. You know I mean, mean? Uh, and I, it, it makes me believe this. It's again, whether it's nuclear facility or that's what he seemed to be like hinting on, you know, he's like, you know, the, how important it is for this country, that the other country. That's, it's interesting. Like, that's and, interesting. You know, just because of the way that he seemed to be, it's like, yeah, it's how important it is to his country, Australia. It's like, and, and everything you hear about, these things, how they're radiated towards the nuclear energy and and whatever it might be and how they, like, you can't even imagine the type of scientists that have been working on these things. And that's and that goes back to what the, the report was and what the big topic of conversation between Sheehan and Ross Colher was on this um, show today, or yesterday, I guess, at this time, um, was, and it's the thing that pissed me off about the report, is that they, they just, they hearkened on so much on, aliens alien life and they just kind of brushed over just a little bit the reverse engineering thing no 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 reverse engineering thing but there's no aliens and it's like wait let's really talk about the reverse engineering program because that's that's what this is really about because even if it isn't nhi or alien or whatever it is what is it what do you yeah. and it's like well we can't let you know we can't let you know because well yeah but that's not what you're saying you're you're saying that there's no program whatsoever. There's something, and this whole thing it just stinks. The whole thing just stinks. You know, you, you make a great point because they for forever they denied there was ever a program, right? Yeah. Then 2017 New York Times article breaks. Oh no, there is a program. Yeah. Then then you know 
Sean Kirkpatrick and Arrow says, no, no, there's no reverse engineering programs. Then this historical report comes out. Oh, no, we did have a reverse engineering program and crash retrieval program, but we disestablished it and this and that because they weren't getting anywhere and whatever. But if you noticed and someone pointed it out in the comments, this is why I love all the betters on vetted. Mm -hmm. They said expanded the program. Right. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Right. Like they didn't. And now they admit that program exists well before they denied even that dis you know that program existed so it's like right. they keep they keep moving it right just like we talked about the term extraterrestrial mm. right they use that term which is so old school like what are we talking about like extraterrestrial you know what i mean it's such a yeah. that's clearly not the word that's being used in the domain right now oh, it's the boomer generation man it's it is it's, you know? at that at that side of it it's like it, it goes back to what we were talking about where it's the old school way of the the old playbook yeah, you look at kind 100%. of sports, sports analogies. Like, well, that's the way we used to win games. We just keep using that play. It's like, yeah, but they got a different defense now. Can't keep yeah. using play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we we need that. Uh, what was that little Giants? We need the annexation of Puerto Rico play right now. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. That's what we need. Um, yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Make great points. So, and I will say the other thing that came out of all of this last week that, uh, and, and, when we had on, and I know you covered it, you covered Matt Laszlo's story last week, and then Matt was dropping some some bombs too, where he, after the, the report came out, he's like, we got something incoming, something big. And everyone's like, this better be big. And it was pretty damn big. And here's here's the report that Matt had on Ask a Poll. David Grush is in talks with the UAP caucus member about becoming congressional intel aide. It would be a mechanism for us to have somebody on the inside that's steering the ship the Congressional UAP Caucus member exclusively told Ask a Poll. Now, I think, and I'll let Patrick uh, answer this once this is over, I think that this has been confirmed since, I'm not sure, but a member of the Congressional UAP Caucus and UFO whistleblower David Grush are in talks about bringing the former intelligence officer onto their congressional staff to work on intelligence matters, including their ongoing UFO investigation. Ask, Ask a Poll has exclusively learned. What would he be able to do in order to be able to coordinate and able to talk to some of these individuals that we need to bring into the SCIF? The UAP caucus member asked for, it has to be anonymous, out of sensitivity to Grush as they navigate House administrative hoops and hurdles in the U.S. House of Representatives. So they basically said, I've been trying to hire him, I've been trying to bring him on staff, and they said the goal would be if he's on staff, his security clearance would be, it would be renewed. He would have the place to park his clearance. And we are kind of exploring that as a concept to see if it would work. The question is, let's say he's on staff, what authority would he have and would it work? The other thing is like, he doesn't want to get paid. He's not somebody that's trying to do this because he wants money, but it would be a mechanism for us to have somebody on the inside that's staring the ship. This is pretty massive, dude. This is massive because, you know, as he was, I believe, um, a co-founding member of the Soul Foundation, or at least part of, of it, and he's not involved as much anymore, there's got to be a reason for that and this seems to be one of those potential reasons this is a big deal if he goes over there because now it's like if you're the dod and you're arrow you're going oh no 100 percent, right yeah. like oh grush we can't get rid of this guy right um yeah you can't get rid of the guy the guy has no social media Right. He testified before Congress. He's put together the best investigation of the UFO topic, in my opinion, ever mm -hmm. uh, coordinate a list of 40 firsthand whistleblowers. Again, a treasure map, a roadmap. And they want to bring him in. I like what they're trying to do here. Right. And, and, and if you notice, it's not just like, oh, bring David Grush in as an aide, like he'll be getting coffee. No, no, no. They're figuring out a way to get him into. I like that quote, park his clearance. Right. So he can get that back start getting in and doing investigations again. And I like this. I'll be yeah. honest. I like this, but it's not confirmed that he's okay. taken the job. Like he wants to do it, but that there's no confirmation that that has been floating around on some YouTube channels that okay. oh, it's confirmed. He got the job. He's doing it. No, no, no. It, they're talking about, it. I mean, this is the report, right? Matt, Matt Laszlo's is what I would trust. They're, they're talking about it. They're trying to find a way to make it work because they're trying to do it clearly from this interview in a different way. Right. Right. They're, they're trying, then they normally do. Um, and I think they're and and rightfully so they're trying to cross their T's and dot their I's so that when they do get Grush in, there's no pushback. Right. Hey, we did this all the right way. And that's right. David Grush's style, too. Let's be real. The guy is all about crossing his T's and dotting his I's. And that's why I respect him. I, I look the, also the report of that he doesn't want to get paid. And it's like it's like that that conversation yeah. of people 100%. going, 
you're right. The people, because you get that all the time. I'm sure on your channel is just like, yeah, he's probably, I don't trust Grush. He's just trying to sell books. It's, it's like, yeah. if you investigate him, that's not what this guy's trying to do at all. 100%. Totally he's going to go down in history, man. This guy, he's like, he's, he, he everyone says, oh, he's an American hero. This is a world hero. This is a world I hero. Agree. I agree. He, he's the person I respect the most in the UFO topic the community um he puts his money where his mouth is he's yeah. not he's he doesn't hide um he's a soldier he, man he's a soldier. He, he's a soldier he seems so genuine about this he believes in it he believes in the whole idea more than just his investigation if that makes yeah. sense right and that's yeah. something we need like that integrity is hard to find um and yeah we should be championing him and i'm, I'm actually glad to hear that they're trying to do something like this to be honest. Do you know the? I mean, that's why one of the reasons I think the DoD and Arrow would start to go just shake even more. So is that in the report that I don't want to gloss over, he could get his clearance back. Yep. I mean, and they'll renew if you, if you know again they'll park it right. It's a way of it's just a workaround. It's like look, yeah. let's get him in. For the, let's get him as an aide. You know, for me and blah blah blah. That can get him his clearance back, and he can do start doing work and have resources, basically, right? Get some resources yeah. and try some things and spread the word and share some of this information. Uh, again, if they've got nothing to hide, what's wrong with that? Right? Yeah, what it seems to me is that the the because there are there's like there's a battle within the government here. The people who actually want the disclosure, the bipartisan kind of fight. The, for the for the information about what's coming on and and then you got the the other side of this been playing the same game for 70 80 years and now with the they basically you can see well okay well they're trying they're not letting us talk to this guy in skiffs they're not letting us do this they're not letting us do that what do we do and somebody goes can we bring him on as an employee give ralph yeah. a raise give yeah. ralph a raise <laughs> <laughs> and we're like and ralph you lost your job david grush is taking your office clear it out uh, Damn it, now, no, yeah, yeah. he's like i shouldn't have said nothing no you're right you're right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny yeah, I, mean, I mean that's it man and and look they're painting it as he'll be an intelligence aide right they're, right you now so he can do these other and i'm sure he would work on other things because that's just that's just the type of guy he seems right like david grush um so yeah, that, uh, great point. It paints also more of a picture of him. If this was someone who just like, look, I'll testify, you know, sure, and then I'm on a, and then I'm done. This guy has made it his mission to go no, and especially, and I think that reporter that 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 did that, that, you know, that hit piece on him afterwards, I think that just pissed him off even more. Oh, and, oh Ken Klippenstein, I covered that. Yeah. I, that. I mean, again, whether you believe in aliens or UFO, or this or that, come on. It was dirty. That, that was so disgraceful and dirty and yeah. calculated. Uh, yeah, it was it was disgusting. Yeah, you heard no from that guy. Where's he been? Exactly. I know, he's still, I know he still reports, but he hasn't touched this. He probably said, I don't want to get involved with that anymore. Well, I mean, he came across again, regardless of how you feel about it, it came across dirty. It I did. mean, he called he called David Grush a drunk. Like yeah. on 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 breaking points, this YouTube show that I watch for politics. Mm -hmm. Um it was just disgusting. The guys, like, I just couldn't believe that. Honestly, I was, but let's be real. It, it only helped Grush. It, 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 it gave support, right? Because it was like, whoa, man, this guy is a military guy. Like you explained PTSD. He lost a friend in battle yep. and that affected him. Well, how are we going to downplay people that were asking in the, in the military, go serve, right? deal with something, come back. Of course, they're going to need some help. And, and it wasn't got even the help. Like, yes. And it wasn't even like he was let go from the job after Correct. all went down. He exactly. still he was still there. He was still yep. in, and, they, and and they they was like, no, he just went through some stuff and then he's back. And he had and he had and he was and he got himself good and he and he did what he had to do and he did his job. So that was a, a dirty thing. And then the way that he's everything that you said about him, the way that he presents himself, the mission, you can tell. That he just wants, he just wants to get this news out there, and having him in there is a is is a good thing. So, I like yeah. the report. I'm very curious to what you guys think out there. Make sure you put your thoughts in there about all this stuff that we're talking about because it's um it's super important. And before we move on to our final subjects, before we get into it, as I mentioned before, our sponsors really help. Um, I want to tell you guys about both uh, Factor and Mando. There you go. Here we go. Factor and Mando excited to talk to you guys about factor man you know it's not always easy to eat better but it is with factor 
because they have delicious ready to eat meals. It's every one of them is it's fresh, it's never frozen, it is chef crafted, it's dietitian approved, and it's ready to go. This is the best part, two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from each week, whether it's Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, all of it. And there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? Two-minute meals, and there's a lot of great stuff. Pancakes, smoothies, there's no prep, there's no mess meals, it's flexible for your schedule. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. You just sign up and you save. You head to factormeals.com slash bigthing50, but you got to use that code, bigthing50. And what happens when you use bigthing50? You get 50% off. That's bigthing50 at factormeals.com slash bigthing50, and you get 50% off. Hey, you. You want to smell like a zero? What does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you. In a clinical study, men who showered with soap and used Mando whole body deodorant in their pits had an odor score of zero after 12 hours. That means no odor. That's why I love it. I hate when you put on deodorant and you're like, oh, my pits smell great. And then an hour later, you smell like an alley cat. I don't want that. Because the other thing that they did a study on is men who showered with just soap had an armpit odor score of 8 out of 10 after 12 hours. Big odor. So this is why we introduced Mando from the makers of Lumi Deodorant. Mando is clinically proven to control odors for 72 hours. It doesn't matter where you stink. It could be your pits, your package, your feet, and beyond. You got to make the switch to Mando whole body deodorant, and you're going to smell like a zero every day. They sent this, man, and I was like, all right, let me test it out. Let me see. No stink. New customers will get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code and link. You got to use that code BIGTHING at shopmando.com. That's shopmando.com. Use the code BIGTHING at shopmando.com. All right, thank you to our friends over at Factor and Mando. And make sure, once again, if you want and you're able to, you have the means. I always link the sponsors in the description, and they're always the pinned comment up top. All right, let's get to some more because Ross Coldheart is all over the place this week. So let's talk a little bit more about what he said. All right, so we got a um, – there's a few Sheehan clips from this historic um, interview from Ross Coldheart's uh, debut episode. And here is here's this clip with Danny Sheehan. We'll talk about it. it's about five minute clips. We'll talk about it on the other side. Here it is. You've asked for and been given access to the UFO files, the secret files of Project Blue Book, the files the government denies exists. What did you find? Well, what I did is I walked in and I was in this this a comparatively small room. It was about maybe twenty feet wide and about twelve feet or so deep. And there were these uh, three big uh, cardboard fold-out tables, <laughs> uh, and they had uh, like shoeboxes, these little light green kind of government green uh, shoeboxes uh, with the little ties on them. Uh, and there was a microfiche machine that was there. Uh, and so I, I sat down, uh, and I took the, the yellow pad out, and I slid it over behind one of the boxes so that if they looked in, they wouldn't see it. Uh, and I, I opened up the first box, and, I, and they – had these little uh, film canisters uh, of microfiche film. Uh, so I took the first one out and I put it into the, uh, this old timey microfiche machine and started cranking it and looking at it. it was all these documents. And I, was, I said, I don't know how long they're gonna allow me to stay in here. Uh, and so I said, if I start reading each one of these documents as a lawyer, it's gonna take forever. So I sort of cranked through them to, to see if there were any photographs anywhere. Nothing was there in the first canister, and so I, I folded it all up and put it back in, and I opened up a second canister, went through it, and they had a lot of documents again. I could see all the official uh, stamps on them and, and the top secret uh, designations, et cetera. And then I, I got to the third canister, I think it was, and par part way in, there it was. Here was this series of photographs, uh, black and white photographs of a crashed flying saucer. It wasn't any doubt about what it was. It was a winter scene. Uh, there was snow on the ground, and the, the saucer, it was a classic uh, large disc saucer about 40, 50 feet across with a big dome on the top of it. And it had hit into this snow-covered field, and it plowed this big ditch all the way across the field, like the earth was all turned up, and it was stuck into the side of the uh, this big snow-covered embankment, stuck in there like at a 45-degree angle, just stuck in the side of the, the hill. Uh, and I could see all around it, there were these Air Force personnel. Uh, they were in winter jackets, you know, with the big fur around the hood and 
uh, in there and they were uh, t taking photographs of it. And I actually saw one of the guys in one of the photos, there were like three of them that I saw the photos and they had one of these uh, old timey cameras, a movie camera, like with the two big round canisters on the top of them. So it must've been like in like the late forties or early fifties or something I, I figured. And so that I, and then all of a sudden I realized that in one of the photos I could see around the bottom of the dome of the, the, the crash saucer that was stuck in the embankment, these symbols. And I, I looked at them and I said, wow, look at the, you know, they're, they're, there's nothing like anything I've ever seen. They're not Russian. They're not Chinese. They're not, you know, uh, hieroglyphics. There's nothing. They're totally unique. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to trace these because I want to make sure they're absolutely identical to what is there and that they're in the exact sequence that they're in. And so I did as I took these out the yellow. These are, these are tops. These are top secret files, Denny. Isn't that an act of espionage? No, no, I'd, I'd been cleared to see them. Uh, and so, so what <laughs> I did, I, I took out the yellow pad. And interestingly enough, uh, it's just one of those instinctive things. I opened up the yellow pad to the inside cardboard backing. Uh, and what I did is I pushed the backing uh, underneath the, the microfiche machine and then focused the, the microfiche right onto the inside back, inside cover of the yellow pad so that I could, I, I traced them identically, uh, absolutely, totally accurately, every single one of them. And there must have been about uh, to eight or 10 of them that were all obvious. Uh, and so I could, and I traced them in detail and I got them all done. I kept looking up to see if anybody was watching. And so I got it all done and I closed the yellow, the yellow pad. Uh, and I said, that's it. Uh, I got it. You know, that's a UFO, man. And look, it's got all these, these unique uh, symbols on them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the put the stuff away. I put the little uh, microfiche away, put it back in the box, took the yellow pad, stood up and put it under my arm. You know, I have my suit on uh, and I, I didn't put it inside my suit to try to hide it. But I just stuck it under my arm and I turned around and got up and walked out. I walked right straight out the door and the two guys were kind of surprised. Uh, and I'm surprised when I, and I think about it that I left as soon as I did, but I, but I had the information and I said, I don't want to take any chances at all. So I, I left, I went out the door and I reached out and picked up my briefcase that was standing, sitting there by the side and I started walking down the hall. And all of a sudden one of the guys said, hold it, hey, hold it. And I stopped and he said, what is that you got there? And I said, oh, that's my briefcase. I just picked my briefcase up, which was, he said, no, no, under your arm. What's under your arm there? They, both of them came over to me and kind of loomed over me. And one of them reached over and yanked the, the yellow pad away from me and then ruffled through all the yellow pages. And there was nothing on them, of course. And then he kind of grumpily handed it back to me. And so I put it back under my arm uh, and just turned around, picked up my briefcase and started walking down the hall. I hope I wasn't whistling, uh, you know, <laughs> to try to get, but I, but I went down the hallway and got into the got into the elevator. When I got in the elevator, I opened my briefcase and put the yellow pad in. Got up and went up the stairs. Drew and walked right straight out the door. All right. So here, this is the symbols that I guess I guess this is the same. So this is the symbols that Danny Sheehan. Oh, this is from June eighteenth, two thousand twenty-two. Is what this tweet is. So I guess he's told the story before, but those are the actual symbols that he saw. So I guess he's told this before, but he just told it again on on Coulthard, I guess. Well, right there, it says the symbols from Jesse Marcel Roswell. Oh, so maybe it was a different, I don't know, but maybe there's a different one that they, they showed, but either way that let's, let's talk about that story. Um, it's a crazy story. And this is going back to what we said earlier. This is why you would get him as a firsthand witness to say, like, no, I saw all these documents. I, I saw them. And if you say that under oath, it's different than saying I mean, nothing against Ross Colhart show. I mean, I, I believe a lot of these stories that are being said, but it's a lot different when you're saying it on a podcast than when you're saying it in front of Congress. hundred percent. Yeah. Could, couldn't agree with that more. Absolutely. What do you say? You said you had a whole bunch of questions after seeing that clip. What's what stands out? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think he said it's uh, he was in a small room, but then he also said, like, I had to look around to make sure they didn't see me. Like, how many people were in there with them? Who authorized him to go in there? What, a, like, is he in a corner of a room? How's he, what kind of micro niche film is he looking right. at? How's he tracing it? That, that, you know, big, I don't know. Um, and that's all there was micro niche. 
but then I also think, okay, he saw this picture of a UFO. He's noticing a lot of detail. How is he seeing the symbols? Like, how big is this picture? How big is the UFO in the picture? Does that make sense? That you could see the symbol yeah. so clearly. But he also said, I know it's not hieroglyphics, this or that. Nothing against Danny Sheehan, but how does he know every language that's ever been written in the history right. of man? Right. Um, now, and I get his point of it's nothing he recognized. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, you see a disc with a dome and it's crashed into the, th I mean, I'm thinking the same thing. Okay. I'm, uh, let's be real. I'm thinking, well, that's yeah. a UFO, right? right. Like, I, I mean, so I get his point of, and then you see symbols, you're going to think it's, you know, extraterrestrial or ultra terrestrial or interdimensional or mm -hmm. whatever we want to, uh, say, um, yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. I want to see the symbols. Like, I don't know if that's what, what it was, what you showed, but that was a no with you know on the on the just like he described i don't know i mean it's fascinating it's super fascinating you know? I mean, like you know, that whole interview i mean i was only about like 25 minutes into it before we started recording and um even even it starts off like just on fire where they're basically saying that you know arrow is is lying and then that he goes as his tweet said about sean kirkpatrick apparently in the interview he goes after sean kirkpatrick even more so and this is where these players in the game on the fight for disclosure do have to come to play. Cause when you're doing interviews like this and Danny Sheehan has been someone that has been very respected in this community and you get all these different players, Ross Colhart, very respected uh, reporter, but I think they all know what we said before that we're at a place now that you can have the coolest stories in the world right now. You know, great stories and be like oh yeah but this person said this and this colonel said this and this submarine was able to see this but until there's some big news of like oh well that's definitely real it ain't gonna the needle ain't gonna move any forward as far as public opinion goes yeah i mean look um let, let's you know i'm gonna be fair here to danny sheehan right the, the guy's history as a lawyer is phenomenal yeah. right yeah. we're talking watergate pentagon paper right That's there's right. a lot he's been involved the mafia like this guy has mm -hmm. been involved with a lot okay yeah. cuba um he definitely knows his stuff and he's got a lot of credibility but like you just mentioned that's only going to go so far with right. these stories right i mean he's a lawyer he right. has to know that you've got to have evidence in a court to prove some of this stuff right so um yeah i mean let's just get on that right like what what is this evidence and let's let's get it going well that's part of the whole question that we're asking here today is like it, what what comes next like what 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 happens yeah. now and yeah. and this is maybe a, an answer to that is that this is one of the things that happens now um that this guys like sheehan because the, who are well respected who have been um doing this and and been trying to move the needle for so long getting involved in the, these hearings like there there is a group right now that is just not they're not backing down they're just not backing down um correct did you did you hear this this is another one that came out i guess this came out about four minutes ago when we were to this let me let me put the apparently there was a ufo reverse engineer whistleblower that was supposed to meet with chris mellon but he died before the meeting did you hear this one all right, this is a clip out from uh, Skyfire News posted this from Chris Mellon, and here it is. One of the allegations is that the U.S. recovered either an object that landed and was left undamaged or something that was crashed, mm -hmm. maybe more than one occasion, mm -hmm. and that the material was provided to some of our aerospace companies that build our most advanced aircraft and so forth mm. for them to try to research and understand. And therefore that may be a source of knowledge and information and they may actually possess some of these materials. So they wanted to include that in the scope of this, uh, of this inquiry and this new legislation. Mm. Because there is, the the possibility that there may be uh, reverse engineered technology in private companies. Right. Doesn't mean that they succeeded in reverse engineering, but one of the stories is one of the allegations is, and I've that I was supposed to meet a fellow, for example, who supposedly was in one of these aerospace companies and supposedly had been directly involved in that activity. 
And uh, we were about two ways, weeks away from meeting when he died, when he had a heart attack. And, um, you know, uh, can't say, uh, you know, whether that was true or not, but that's one of the allegations. And it makes sense because mm -hmm. if you're the government and say you recovered some degree and there were complex components and materials, right? You wanted to have, keep it secret, but have world-class technicians and scientists try to understand it. Mm -hmm. It would be natural that you would go to Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or Grumman or some of those companies. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris Mellon is a guy that I, he's obviously a big name in the community too. I don't talk to him, talk about him as much as I think that I should, you know, like you look at the stuff that he, he's kind of, he's, there's some people that are out there kind of fightingly the kind of louder fight and he seems to be fighting the quieter fight, but it doesn't mean it's any more of a less important fight. If that makes sense. Chris Mellon is um, right. He's the one that helped leaked all these videos from the 2017. Yep. We wouldn't be having the conversation we're having without Chris Mellon. I think he is working behind the scenes and that's probably, let's be real where the most important work is being done. Um, I know for a fact, he's approached other governments to have, um conversations about this and get the ball rolling not just in america um so he's definitely doing a lot of work um to make things happen and yeah i mean him and lou together as a team are great right yeah uh, getting this going so yeah i think as we wrap this up here i think that this was to me the exact opposite of what DOD and Arrow was trying to do this week. Because I, when I heard the report, I will admit that I was like, here we go again. This is the same thing that's been going on for years. And then it's just going to kind of quietly go away and people are going to be like, all right, nothing to see here. But instead it was, which is bizarre that I felt that way because I, I never once said, well, I'm going to stop talking about it. I was like, I'm going <laughs> to keep going. So, yeah. so I, I don't know why everyone else would have just suddenly packed up and gone away, but it just, it did the exact opposite. And I guess I'm maybe more so thinking of like, well, maybe it means that the people over at Seoul will be like, what, what, are, what kind of fight are we battling right now? Maybe we, maybe we can't get any more access or maybe the, uh, the, the Lunas and Burchettes or those are going, ah, we, this is, we're, we're, we're getting too much pushback, but it seems the exact opposite. Yeah, man. I mean, to end on a positive note, like, again, talking about earlier, we've come a long way. This this uh, topic subject has spread more publicly, right? It's getting out of just the UFO community and it's getting right. It's growing out like a virus. Right. Yeah. And people are engaged with it. So when this report comes out, this isn't like 40 years ago or 50 years ago where the public's just going to accept and putter out it'll putter out and we'll move on no there's too many people involved too again millions of people across the globe with their own experiences military personnel uh leaders in military saying we, we have uap flying around our training facilities every day pilots yeah. testify i mean what are we talking about it's it spread so much that when this report came out let's be real i think everyone knew that the report was going to say this right and you know we're ready for it to be honest i don't think anyone's necessarily surprised it's not going to go away. You just, it's too spread out. It's spread too much. There, there's just no way for it to go away. And I think that's a positive thing. You know, the genie is out of the bottle. The genie exactly. is out of the bottle. No putting it back in. I agree with you, Patrick. Exactly. So, all right. Uh, before I let you go, I got to ask you this. Cause I know I heard you say it in your show. What's your favorite UFO movie? Oh, ho, ho. okay. Contact. Good one. That's it, man. I love contact. That seems like, uh, that seems yeah. like the most, I don't know. I don't know. I just love that movie. I, I would know. probably go with, uh, if, we're, if we're in the year of Denis Villeneuve, I'd probably go with Arrival. I love Arrival. That'd be my yeah. second um, uh, second one. I, I, you know, yeah, 100%. I just feel like Arrival, done, especially with all the stuff they're talking about with how like time and space works and the way that they <laughs> that's go point. Yeah, that's, that's I, a good point. I, I want to go back and revisit that movie. I loved that movie when it came out. I remember used to get into arguments with people about that movie. It's, to me, it was just brilliant. Brilliant. And I do, and I do love fire in the sky, actually. Okay. That, that was a big influence for me in the night, like uh, that story and that film, it's very terrifying, but it just seems so real. And I don't know, it's well done. And just as a movie, it's well done, but that story is fascinating. And I think, I think there's just a lot of people that can relate to that. Yeah.
Well, all right, brother, man. Listen, uh, Patrick, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Can you tell, uh, tell the good people where they can find you? Absolutely. Uh, check us out on YouTube, just vetted. Uh, if you put that into YouTube, we'll come up right away. We're on Twitter as well. Um, uh, vetted podcast. Um, Check us out on Spotify if you don't want to see the videos um, or just go to our website, vetted.show. There you go. So make sure you do that because Patrick's doing some great stuff over there and I'm really enjoying it. And I think that if you guys are enjoying this show, then his show is absolutely something you should be checking out. So Patrick, thank you, my man. And for you guys, once again, if you're brand new to the channel and you've never been here before, hit that button, man. Subscribe to the channel. We have conversations like this. I got both Darcy Weir and Tim Gallaudet next week next week man and the stuff that tim told me and that we talked about was great i have some other interviews lined up not confirmed yet but if i get them it looks like i mean confirmed in the fact that they want to do the show and if i get them people are going to lose their minds it's just a matter of if we uh if we got we got to get those dates we got to get those dates so apple podcasts spotify anywhere podcasts are found make sure you do that comments and thank you to our sponsors again if you want to help the show please consider one of our sponsors. All right, for Patrick, I'm me. You're you. See you later. Bye.